Alright, we're in my fucking house. The fucking place is the size of a fucking sardine can. And the problem is, uh, here's the living room. It's very little. It's a row house. And it's a one story row house with a full basement. So it's really fucking small. And there's, uh, my son lives here now. And uh, he sleeps in the basement like Arthur from the King of Queens, which is the, one of my favorite shows. And uh, when they come up to eat, there's nowhere for anyone to eat. Just, everyone's got to sit in the fucking living room with TV trays, okay? So, I mean, we look like a bunch of border jumpers in here. So, what I want to do is see this big wall right here. I'm going to cut a big window out of it. I don't know if you guys are going to like this video, but you said you can go off subject with guns once in a while, you're going to get one. I mean, this is what I used to do before I was a welder. For years, I was a contractor. And when it comes to contracting, everyone has their own way of doing stuff. There's no right and wrong way. You know what I mean? So everyone uses a ruler different. Everyone uses a level different. Some people use snap line. Some people use a laser. Some people use pencil line. So just, just watch the fucking video, okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, so yeah this is a big problem so there's nowhere for everyone to eat and here's the kitchen everything's on the it's a mess right now everything's on the table uh, that's one of those old 1950 tables uh, my mother-in-law gave that to us and it's uh, they're worth money man they're collectible so people my wife don't like it but I do I think it's cool looking looks good with the uh, burgundy paint kind of like a diner but here's the other side of the wall okay and this is going to be a big, I'd say maybe five foot in diameter. I don't know how big I'm going to make it. I just do things. You know, I don't, I don't go by diagrams. I just do it. Uh, so this thing is going to have to come off the wall. Now, when you're when you're cutting a hole in your wall, you got to make sure there's no there's no electricity, no wires in the wall. And the only thing I can see is there's no outlet on this whole wall, but there's a switch here. So I'm going to make sure I'm at least come over. I'm not even going nowhere near that switch. I'll probably come over to about here and make the hole. That up there is a pot rack. Uh, I made that in a, when I was a welder. I made that in our shop. I got some scrap metal because there was nowhere to put the pots. It works good, but that's going to have to come down. All right, let's start laying it out. I'll show you how we lay this out. Okay, well, when you're laying out a wall, you're going to do a job like this. You don't need that many tools. Today, we're just going to lay it out. What I mean by laying it out is um, we're just going to make the lines level and square. You have to have everything level and square. The more square your foundation is, the easier it is for everything to come together. If you put, in, if you put your starting point a little off square, everything's going to be a bitch. Putting the molding in is going to be a bitch. Your miter cuts ain't going to line up. Everything's going to be fucked up. So you got to get that hole as square as you can possibly get it. So all I need here is a four foot level, which is that, and that like extra heavy duty tape measure I got, uh, and that combination square, and a carpenter's pencil. Try to use one of these because they don't break. Regular pencils, you push on them hard and they bust. All right. Alrighty then. All right. I'm going to make my vertical line. Combination squares save you a lot of bullshit. Saves a lot of time. Saves you a lot of measuring. You just adjust the square to your mark and use the back end of it along the molding here. If the molding's level, put your pencil on the end and just slide down. Just like that. Now it might not be real smooth because the molding has little paint bumps in it, but it gives you an idea. So this is getting cut out. This stays, counters go in here, and I'm probably going to go up. I'd say we're going to be bad here. I'm going to go up and start going up. Uh, I gotta draw my. Uh, I gotta measure. Uh, no, measure it down. I'm gonna bring my uh, level with eyeball it, level with the uh, opening there. And just because uh, I am a short bastard, I gotta go get my step ladder. All right, I laid my square out. I don't know if you can see it. 
you can see that it's ready to go once you lay your square out you start cutting I gotta go down I have a sawzall or a lot of people call it a reciprocating saw it's a fucking sawzall a lot of guys say reciprocating saw it's ridiculous uh, yeah but we want to cut through one side of the wall at a time you don't want to cut through both sides at a time it takes longer but the job will come out better all right that's why I hate tripods this whole square I don't know if you can see it is going to come out and then there's going to be a countertop here and uh, stools on both sides and there'll be more places for everyone to eat later all right I'm gonna cut this fucker out I'm not going to show you the whole time because I ain't got that much time on my camera I got a Makita. Makita. Yeah, fuck. Here. A DeWalt. A little Sawzall. You can get these for like a hundred bucks. These are fucking awesome. Uh, they're heavy duty. And now I'm going to use a short drywall blade or a wood blade. Same thing as a drywall blade. You want a short one because I don't want to hit the other side of the wall. Alright, so this is a for steel. That's for cutting steel. And what I do is I put the blade in upside down. Like that. See? It's upside down. If I can get closer to the wall. I can keep the, 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 the saw closer to the wall up on an angle. I don't want to be like this because I don't want to cut inside the wall. Okay? And you got to be real careful in case you don't hit wires. Yeah, it's just, you know, you just got to hope. And if, you, if you hit a wire, the worst thing that's going to happen is a breaker is going to go, and then you just repair the wire. It's not a big deal. All right, hold on. Whew, man, I am a very heavy person. I'm not used to this weight. I always complain about it. I'll never stop complaining about it. All right. Since it's a plaster, this is all skim coat. It's all plaster house. This ain't drywall. So you can't just get a, a saw and poke it. You got You need a starter hole. So you just got. I just got to hit a hole. Get my hammer, that's a gay hammer. Where's my good hammer? Yeah. This is a good hammer. It's an east wing, it's all steel. It's it's a good hammer. Alright, and I want to make a starting joint, a starting point. So I want to do is on this side of the line, uh, just tap a little hole. Okay? Not too close because I don't want to even if it breaks over here, it doesn't matter. matter. I'm gonna be spackling this whole thing. But I want less arrows as I can have, okay? Okay, just like that. Well, I'm going to start cutting that out and uh, see how it happens. Okay, it's been a while. I've done this shit in a long time. Okay, I'm going to keep my saw up on an angle. You get the idea. I just hit a stud, so. Alright, I got my hole cut in. It's all cut out. There was one, two, three studs that I had to cut out. And I had to, uh, there's an outlet down here. And someone tapped off it, ran a wire up to the outside light. So I had to cut that wire and put a junction box up in there and splice into this wire just like that see that fucking phone every time let's see if it's a fucking bill collector I'll tell you if it's a bill collector it'll say unknown see that? unknown fucker bill collector okay anyway yeah, that's what I'm doing I got that whole so what I'm going to do now is uh, call quits for today, and I got to go get corner bead, and uh, you know, I'm not going to put molding all around it like this door, 
I'm going to put corner bead and spackle. And now I got to fill the gaps in with 2x3s. These hollow spots. So the studs that I took out, I'll use to fill in all the hollow spots. And then I might have to go buy more to put to fill in the top. And all you do is just drill it all in. Make like a big window frame. That's all you do. But it's a pretty good cutout. Nice and square. I tried to keep it clean as I could. So now I gotta clean this fucking friggin' mother humping mess. This sucks. Alright, there's my trusty little air compressor. My nail gun. Now the hole's cut out. Now what I gotta do now is fill in all the cavities. I gotta fill in all these cavities with wood, which are two by threes. And I'll use the ones that I sawed, these studs that I sawed out of here. And I'm going to use this one right here. I'm sticking that in there. And uh, I'm using that to fill that shit in there. Alright. Alright. I've had a cameraman. Uh, I'd show you more, but I don't. I got this piece in there. It's not nailed in there yet. I have to nail it in because this is fucking plaster. And it's hard to screw with a screw gun and plaster. So I'm just going to get nails and shoot nails in there. I didn't have a... Uh, what I did was I put this in. And I'm going to let this stick out just a little further in the wall. And we're going to make sure that's level. Perfectly level. Perfectly level. And it's... Close. I have to do a little tap. And see the bubble is a little to the left. I got to get that bubble dead center. And then now I'm going to start nailing this bad boy in. What's up dudes? I'm filling these cavities in. I ran out of wood. I got to Home Depot and get two 8 foot lengths of 2 by 3 But what I'm doing is, to show you how to do this, is I filled these cavities in. And they are level. Constantly put your level on as you're nailing them. And uh, what I'm going to do is fill the rest of these cavities in right here. Okay, and then I'm going to get one by four and then put one by four all around, and uh, that'll be my platform. And then uh, you get uh, molding after that, and you go around the edges with molding. All right, all right, all right, dudes. A little off, them. we're buying a new car today, so just it's hard to concentrate. I got a lot of shit going on insurance companies and all but let's get back to this what I did was I cut these pieces filled in the cavities and then you just put a four foot level across all the pieces like that okay so you get that bubble just right that bubble is dead on and what I do is you leave the pieces in loose put the uh, four foot level across and then get it level and then make sure all the pieces are up against the level which they all are all right so now I'll be able to nail it in okay uh, it doesn't matter that it's higher than this you'll see later and that's it all right man all the cavities are filled in see all the way around they're all filled in now you, you I probably didn't have to do that but that's just the way I like to do shit man I probably could have just you know nailed the nailed the next layer to just the studs but I'd rather do it this way because now I know they're all nice and straight and level and when I put my plate on there it'll be level already I won't have to keep leveling things and I could just go to town and nail everything up so what you do is you, you level out your rough frame, make sure it's all level. Then when you do your finish work, you don't want to have to keep checking when it level, because it just slows you down. All right. Dan from the 45 Reason just called me. Said my membership is on my way, on its way here from the new gun range. So I'm excited about that. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of range videos, dudes, because let me tell you something. This gun range is an hour away, but at least when we do range videos we can have fun and then there won't be so many rules and all that nonsense okay if I get a real reliable car someday 
which I think is going down today. It's for my wife, but I can use it. And uh, that's the deal. All right, so we're going to put the uh, start putting our finish work together. I'm going to get my. I had to buy one by fives. Because one by four, you know, isn't one by four, it's one by three and a half. So it would have been too short. One by five is too wide. But if it's too wide, it doesn't matter. Because I can get clamshell molding and just go all around the edges with the clamshell molding. That's what's great about molding, man. If things don't fit right, you'll find a piece of molding that'll make it work. Alright, see. Alright, ham slammers. My uh, first plate's down right here. Uh, looks good. Uh, I want it to hang over both sides equally because the uh, molding is going to go up underneath it and uh, it has to be perfect. Uh, it's a little tight but I like that. And when you're uh, nailing this in, I got any fucking nails in here? Yeah. When you're nailing this in, you don't want to go in a straight line. <clears throat> you kind of want to stagger them like a zigzag like this. All the way down. So I already, I already put this in place with my hammer, and uh, I always overcut to make it tight so it holds it tight for me. You know what I mean? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to nail this in place. Uh, it doesn't matter that there's going to be nails because the bar is going on top of here. Okay. Now I'm kind of zigzagging, not a lot. I just don't want to be. across the top and uh, then I'll put my side pieces in all right so I'll be right back all right I'll put my top piece in you always overcut especially when you're working overhead because the pressure will hold the wood up for you and hope I didn't do it too tight that looks tight what you want to do is use the rubber butt of your hammer because you don't want to break the wood and Start whacking it up. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't think that's too tight because it would be like bowing if it was. Okay, that's up nice and tight. Okay, everything's got to be flush and level. Very, very important. Okay, now I'm going to make sure this is sticking out the same way this is sticking out, up and down. So what I'll do is I'll get a level, and I'll put a level on it like this, and use my vertical bubble. And it's saying it's fucking perfect. That's what it's saying. Oh yeah, let's check this side. I might be getting lucky for once in my life. Once in a while it happens. Yeah, we're good. Level. That should happen sometimes you get lucky. Okay, so I'll nail this in. I'll get this all nailed in. And I'm going to put my side pieces in. Alright, this is where we're at right now. It's framed out. The finished plate is all the way around it. They are one by fives. It's very square. I just checked it with a square, and it's like maybe a sixteenth of an inch out of square. That's extremely, extremely good for wood. Now metal, that's not good. But wood, 
and this wood this isn't this ain't prime wood this is crap wood just for framing out so a, a sixteenth of an inch out of square is excellent so that means to me everything should follow through should flow very nice when I'm putting the molding around putting the bar down and everything's gonna go good because we got a straight platform and that's it there's the window right there uh, as far as the bar and all I don't know when I'm gonna get that yet guys uh, that's expensive so I'll see you soon uh, oh let me tell you something about tools real quick when it comes to air compressors and stuff you really don't have to get a DeWalt uh, you can get a knockoff brand if you think about it all it is is a motor pumping air into a tank there's nothing real complex about it so if you can get a, uh, an air compressor at Harbor Freight go for it man I, I have one downstairs by Harbor Freight and they work great you know me I don't like cheap shit I mean there's some stuff at Harbor Freight that sucks balls and there's some stuff that's fine this um, this nail gun I got this at Harbor Freight and it's not a it's not a uh, a bastage or anything. It's just a, uh, it's a finish nail gun. It's a uh, a knockoff, but it works great. I Man, I've used it a lot. It never jammed on me once. It's just like a gun. It feeds and it feeds, it, it feeds in chambers, just like a just like a gun. And guess what I use on it instead of uh, uh, compressor oil. I squirt ballistol in the hole. I put the little nozzle on the can. Just give it two little squirts. You know what I mean? Shake it a little and put the air on. Man, I never have any problems, man. See that? You can even use fucking ballast oil for a nail gun. Sweet.